What's up, YouTube? Zach's back with another attack, and today we are doing the opposition of my video I did several weeks back about why iPhone sucks, why Apple sucks, why you should go with Androids and Windows instead of iMacs and iPhones and everything like that. And if you remember that video, I did say that I use an iPhone. I am shooting this video right now on an iPhone 7 and as you can see I've got an iPhone 5C and I've got an iPhone 4S I think and I um, I also have used a 6S I've used a 3G a 3GS what's up Rozzy good to see you man uh, it's, it's been a minute since I've seen you in a live stream so it's good to have you here man um, and I know you can get behind this topic um, uh, but yeah, I've had a 3G, a 3GS, a 4, a 4S, um, I didn't have a 5, but I had a 5C, um, I, I had a 6, a 6 Plus, a 6S, and now I've got a 7. Um, and I love Apple phones, I've got an Apple laptop that I really, really loved, other than the fact that... Um, I fell asleep while using it one night, and um, I guess I rolled over it in the night or something, and the screen cracked. I've never had a laptop do that before. A 5S, 6, 7, and 10. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it, it was crazy using the 3 and the 3GS. Um, it's so much different. Oh, me too, man. Yeah, it it was terrible. That was an amazing laptop, and the screen just broke like nothing. I guarantee <laughs> I've um, had weight on top of laptops like that before, and the screen's never broken. So, you know, it is what it is. I think the newer Apple laptops are probably strengthened, more sturdy in the screen part, but... Um, this was like a 2007 laptop or something, and the screen just, uh, it, it's not even usable. I still used it for quite a while. I just had to plug it into a TV and then use a wireless mouse and keyboard. But that's a massive workaround, and it was really annoying because at that point, it's not a laptop. It's just a glorified desktop that's slower and taking up a TV because it needed HDMI. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, it's... But I, I I used to have an LG phone, and it, I lost it. And so I decided I wanted an iPhone. I was working at that point, and I had a little bit of money saved up. My parents had bought me this... Um, I just said LG, but that's not right. It was HTC. It was this really nice HTC phone, and I had it for about a week. I actually went to Florida and went to Orlando Studios and left it on a stall in Harry Potter World and um, ended up leaving the stall without it and freaked out because I thought I lost my phone and I did lose my phone. And then everyone, it was like a school field trip, so everybody was getting ready to go back home and I was freaking out because I needed my phone. And somehow my teacher got a hold of the um, office or whatever of Orlando Studios and they were able to get me my phone back. Somebody turned it in, I guess. So I got my phone back and then we got back to my hometown. I went to the Walmart before actually going home after we got back to the school and I left it in Walmart and never saw it again. So after all that, I lost my phone anyway. So anyway, I went on to eBay and just started looking for an iPhone. I'd heard so much about iPhone this, iPhone that. My parents had always been against iPhone and Apple. They always thought it was too expensive and they always thought, <laughs> oh yeah, Razi. Uh, I, I feel so dumb, even to this day. Um, <laughs> my parents hated Apple. They thought it was expensive. They thought that it was lacking features. They thought that it was um, just like a rich person show-off tool. 
if you will. And um, I didn't necessarily think so. I'd seen a few people have them. Back then it was way less common for people to have iPhones and it didn't really take off until closer to the 4S when I started seeing everybody have iPhones. But I went on eBay and just wanted an iPhone. I was like, I assume iPhones are all very, very similar. Um, I think the original 4 was out at this point. And so I got the 3. I was like, it's one generation behind. How much different can it be? And boy, was it different. You couldn't upload pictures as your background. And man, you couldn't take videos. Simpler to use. It was simpler to use, but it really sucked going from a phone that was jam-packed with features, um, that HTC phone, and going to a phone that is... Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah, the 3GS. Um, and, yeah, the speeds weren't as fast, but I was able to jailbreak that thing. And I made great use of it. When you jailbreak a 3G, I don't know if you guys are opposed or for jailbreaking, but you can basically make it so it can take videos. You can speed it up. You can make it have pictures in the background. You can basically make it do everything that the current generation iPhone can do and way more. So I took this phone that I got very cheap on eBay and made it better than the stock iPhone 4s that people were getting. And it was really, really great. It wasn't as good um, as the other ones. Of course, the camera got better and the speed got better and things. So the whole time I was really wanting to move up. So I think that phone ended up getting either lost again <laughs> or something. Um, I don't entirely remember what happened to my three. I, I think I lost it. Um, but I got the 3GS next time. I lo when I lost that phone, I went back on eBay. My parents were like, we're not buying you any more phones. You lost the last one after a week of owning it. And so I went back on eBay and was like, okay, well, I got, oh, Razi, that sucks, man. Yeah, I really want to get a new 3G and a new 3GS, um, or even a 2, uh, like the original iPhone. I think they call that like a 2G at this point, but I know back then it was just the iPhone, and I really want to play with that a little bit. I think that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, I needed a new iPhone. I went on eBay. I was like, you know, I just got the three. Now I want to move up one model. And at that point, everyone was getting the 4S. Um, and so I wanted to get the 3GS. <laughs> and it was worlds better. Hopefully I can get to it. It is really expensive for what it is. It's really just a collection piece. Um, and a lot of people don't really sell it usable by itself for a good price. It's either like crazy expensive or even more expensive and it comes with the box and everything and it's impossible. It's probably fake. I did make my 3GS surpass the um, 4S and that's... That's the crazy part and the problem with jailbreaking back then because there was so many features. Um, oh, really? Well, that's not bad. I might actually have to do that. $100 and $200 used on eBay. That's, that's not as bad as I thought. I know when I was looking at one point, it was a lot more expensive than that. Um, but yeah, I took my 3GS, jailbroke it, got all of these crazy features on it. And it was so good, and there was so much stuff on Cydia from the 4S that was being made compatible with all the old iPhones as well, that this iPhone overheated. It would overheat once or twice daily, and it would shut down the phone, it would reset itself, I would have to wait until it cooled down. It was 
it only ever once got so hot that I couldn't even hold it, which was really bad. But other times it was hot to the touch. Like I could tell it was very hot in my hand, but it wasn't so hot that it like burned me or anything other than one time it didn't burn me, but I was like, okay, that's too hot. I can't even hold this anymore. And doing that for a month or so, uh, like I said, once or twice a day, getting so hot it shuts down, then it just ruined the phone. Thanks, Rousey. That means a lot. Yeah, I, I try and cover a lot, but I try not to be so broad that people can't get behind and appreciate what I'm trying to do. So hopefully I'm getting somewhere near that good balance. I, I kind of just try and make content that I would watch myself. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, but yeah, so then after that phone took a crap, I, um, I think I just got a phone like this. I, um, I believe at that point, um, well, no, I, it wasn't at that point. I got some kind of, I left iPhone at that point. I, I had something that happened to my three <laughs> memes. <laughs> ah, that's great. Um, I, I left Apple and yeah, I've got, as you can see, I am slightly biased in that I love Apple, but I'm not biased in that I won't purchase Androids and I won't appreciate Androids and Samsung phones. And I think that's good because like Andrew Erickson of Taylor Swift Tech, I can say from experience, these phones aren't terrible and they've got redeeming factors and I can say that I know that from actual use and experience. You know, I've used a lot of different phones in my life and the Note series is one of my favorites. Um, I lived in Indiana with all the iPhone stuff. Um, they aren't, to be honest, they aren't terrible. Is that what you're saying? Or they aren't what? Um, sorry, I missed that. <laughs> um, so when I left Indiana, I started using a Galaxy S8. Or shoot, no, that was way too late. It was a Galaxy S four or five and then a note two yeah they aren't terrible thoughts on essential phone um i think it's really good as a, as a budget phone it's really really good i like it more than the um one plus i think that it's it's got a lot of awesome features and if you're on a budget the essential phone is probably the best way to go. On that note, um, if you're not on a budget, then I wouldn't limit yourself to a budget with the essential phone. I do think that you can get better stuff in a Samsung or the iPhones, even if you go back to the iPhone 6S, I think that you're getting a little bit more bang for your buck than on the essential phone. But like I said, if you are in that financial crunch and you need to get something cheaper, such as the essential phone, then definitely get that. It's an amazing phone. And I do recommend it over other budget phones. As far as the Razer phone, I think that it's silly. I am on the same page with Andrew on that. Um, the 120 hertz screen is good but it does kill your battery really fast. And a lot of games don't take full advantage of it. So yeah, it's a gaming phone, if you will, but uh, a lot of games, if they don't take full advantage of that, then it means absolutely nothing. And a lot of people don't get that. And the processors are gonna get old really fast. I think they should have focused on just making the best phone they possibly can, and then throwing 120 hertz on top, or focused on teaming up with people to make better games exclusively for the Razer phone. I think that would have been a really cool way to go to make the Razer phone stand out more than just having a 120 hertz screen. Uh, 
Um, I feel like it would affect and doesn't charge his phone for two days. Oh, wow. I have not played with it for long. I have also used it with some uh, friends and stuff, and it's... I don't really know much about the battery life because I've only used it for a very limited amount of time. But I will say that using 120 hertz long term probably does drain the battery more than having it off. Just because it still can last two days, maybe it just has an amazing battery life. I'm not really sure, but I do know that using 120 hertz has to drain the battery more than using 60 hertz or something. And I don't really see the full point. I do think it looks really, really smooth and crisp and amazing to use 120 hertz, but it's a little gimmicky. It would be cool if Apple did it, but I don't think it's necessary. And the camera is bad. Yeah, there's so many things that it lacks that it tries to make up with, with this 120 hertz display, and it doesn't get the job done. And I don't like that because when it can't get the job done all around, then who cares about a 120 hertz screen? Um, I have heard rumors about that. I'm not entirely sure if that's true. I don't believe that Apple themselves have confirmed that. So I struggle to believe that until Apple themselves come out and say, you can do 120 hertz with the iPhone 10. We just haven't enabled it yet. And I don't think they're going to say that unless they're able to enable it. It's like this whole fiasco with the uh, throttling phones because of the battery. They don't want, they didn't want to come out and say, we throttle your phones. Your phones are slow because of us. They're not going to do that because that makes everybody angry. And that makes people say, well, why would you tell us that if we don't have an option to turn it off? And you know, now they're coming out with an option to turn it off, but I feel like anything in the future, they are not going to comment on it until they have the fix ready to throw at you and say, you don't want this or you do want 120 hertz? Well, yeah, we built it in. We just didn't turn it on. But guess what? Now we're telling you and now you can use it. So I think we may see that if it is. But once again, I just struggle to believe that until it's official from Apple. A lot of bad rumors have come out, including this weird iPhone 10 thing. I think the iPhone is expensive and maybe it's not selling as well. But they did have a hardcore production, and so if it's not selling as well as they thought it would, surely they've got tons of iPhone X's still stocked up from the initial production runs. So, yeah, I don't see the problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't... The iPhone X's gonna leave because the iPhone 11 or the iPhone, you know, at least the 10 Plus is going to come out. That's what's going to kill the iPhone. It's not a crappier version of the iPhone 10. And anyone who thinks that it is, is a little silly. Like Drew said, I don't entirely understand where that's coming from, or at least if that is happening. It's not going to be the price that they're saying, and they're going to upgrade the iPhone 10 and make a separate one that is a better version of the 10. People don't care about money when it comes to iPhones. They want the biggest, the best one they possibly can. And if Apple can shove everything that modern Android phones have into Apple phones and then sell that with the best screen, the best operating system and everything else the best compatibility with other apple products then everyone will buy it and it granted not everyone <laughs> yeah i i don't think they will and at that point they probably would have a headphone jack because with the se's they honestly took a lot of the bodies of iPhones that people had turned in because they get a ton of iPhones back. People will give them 
to them when they are done with them to trade them in for new iPhones and um, they'll buy it back from other Give me one second, I'll get to that. But yeah, they they buy a lot of used iPhones from the phone carriers when people trade it in for new phones. Apple will buy those back. And that's why um, Verizon will take a Sprint phone because obviously Verizon can't use that phone on Sprint. They're not going to resell it to somebody. They sell it back to Apple. And then Apple will take your iPhone 4, you know, if I sold this to Apple, they might take this, pop it apart, touch up the screen a little bit, maybe throw some new glass on there, put in the iPhone SE innards, and essentially you've got your iPhone SE. They use a lot of these parts, that's how they can make it so cheap. And so if they did that, it would definitely have a headphone jack because they're, you know, they're not gonna make a whole new body for the six plus design. You know, so I I don't get it. I think it's crazy. The iPhone SE 2 could be really, really awesome. What I struggle with is that if the price is too high, then it's not worth it. I love the form factor of this phone, being able to use it very easily, one-handed. I can reach from the very top to the very bottom of the screen with no effort, and it's incredibly easy to use the power use the volume hit the home button and i really love the form factor but if it's more expensive than the current se it's not worth it and you know the pull iphone 5s i like the plus models i get where you're coming from i think that that's a fair point, and there's definitely great things about the 5S form factor, but I'm a big fan of bigger phones. That's one of the reasons why I love the Note series, and I'm, I'm thinking about getting a, um, a Note phone and having my iPhone and a Note phone both as my daily drivers. I know MKBHD and a few other tech YouTubers will do that and really get the best of both, both ecosystems. And I think that's a good idea because there's definitely things on each that you can't do on the other. So at times I feel like comparing Apple to Android is like apples to oranges, you know? They're so different, but they've got some similarities so you can compare them. But at the same time, they're a lot different. And they both got their good and their bad. Um, but... If you want me to, I will go hardcore into Samsung right now and just tell you why Apple is the best phone. Is the pair phone? <laughs> Are you talking about from, uh, what was it, iCarly and like Zoe 101? I love my Samsung. What's up, Eric Williams? You are a cool dude. Thank you for being in my podcast the other day. And that other video we did um, will be posted next Friday. <laughs> yeah, Dan Schneider um, with his pair phone. That was hilarious. <laughs> um, I, that was probably one of the reasons I wanted an iPhone, too. So go into it, dude. Sweet, yeah. I'm just about to get into that. Um, there is a video, if you watch my podcast with my brother, Eric, um, then there's another video with him that I think you'll really, really love. It's like a episode of a mini series kind of, and that will come out, um, next Friday, a week from tomorrow. And hopefully you guys enjoy that. It's more of a story thing than just me talking about something. And there's going to be more episodes of that in the future. And then there's another video that I did with Eric that will be, coming out sometime in the future but i'm still working on it i don't know when that'll be done so keep an eye out for that as well but without further ado here is why apple is the best phone and androids suck first off price if you can use price as your argument then one 
you need to get a better job. Like, come on. You've got... Yeah, you can get this crappy phone. I think you got... I think I got this at a grocery store for, like, 50 bucks or something. And it sucks. It sucks. Why would I want this? Why would I want a crappy $50 phone that says Samsung? Who cares about Samsung? I want a good phone. I will pick up the 5C. You can get that very cheap used. <coughs> and it does wonders better than any $50 phone you could possibly get. It was too slow to review. Yeah, this is terrible. It, Especially on the plan I got because it was only able to be used on Boost Mobile. And I used it, um, I think you got one gigabyte of data or something. Which can be used very, very quickly. And after that, your speeds go to uh, slower than 2G. And so it was unusable. The speeds now, I have rebooted it and tried to download an app. And no games I've tried work. It's so laggy, it doesn't even work. Um, and it's ridiculous. You can get an SE for a very reasonable price. You can go down to the uh, 5 if you want to. And, yeah, I wouldn't go down to the 4S at this point. Um, obviously, do the 4S over, like, a 4. But if you can do a 5, a 5S, 5C, anything like that, even the 6. Spent $45 on it. Yeah, there is some decent phones that are in this 50 buck price range. You can just get it at a Walmart or something. But at the end of the day, it, I don't think it compares to the speed, to the integrity, the length of time that a phone will last to Apple. Um, yeah, are you sure it had 8 gigs of RAM? That seems pretty high. Most, um, I think you're no, uh, you got a Note 8, I think. And I believe that only has... Uh, I think that might have 8 gigs of RAM. Or is, does that have 6? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, 6. That's what I thought. Um, so yeah, if you got a phone for 50 bucks that had 8 gigs of RAM, that's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, either way, it, these phones have great cameras, but so do these phones. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. That's... If I get that for 50 bucks, I would buy 10 of those instead of any kind of uh, budget phone. Um, the bad part is the connectors. But guess what? Everybody has iPhone connectors these days. Not, not for this phone. This one's got that 16 pin. That was stupid. But now Apple has fixed it just like... Oh, you're thinking of uh, storage space. Um, yeah. Um, it probably had like one gig of RAM or two gigs of RAM, um, but it stored 64 gigabytes of storage space. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it... Um, RAM is what lets you like keep multiple apps open at the same time and uh, makes the phone go really really quick um, yeah the, so the Note 8 does have six gigabytes of uh, yeah there's probably eight gigs of storage and your phone now is 64 gigabytes of storage that makes more sense um, shoot you guys are throwing me off <laughs> um, So, but, okay, I gotta say though, because of that topic, the fact that that's unnecessary to know is really awesome, because it, when you buy a phone, you don't have to know the RAM, and especially with modern phones, you know, he's got the Note 8, you don't have to know how much RAM that's got, you just know that's an amazing phone. You get the iPhone 10. Who cares how much RAM it's got? Honestly, if you're a big techie, then sure, you focus on that. You can look it up and whatever. But 
there's a reason Apple doesn't even tell you the RAM. They don't talk about it at all because it doesn't matter, you know? It, it's a fast phone. It can run multiple apps at a time. It's good for what it is. And, uh, well, I know that it's got three gigabytes of RAM, but the general person doesn't. And at the end of the day, Apple doesn't tell people that because Apple doesn't care. Apple doesn't think we need to know, and I agree. Because what's it matter? What are we going to do if it's three gigs of RAM versus two? Like, yeah, that helps. We can use more apps at a time. We can um, know it runs faster or whatever. But if you want the Note, you're going to get the Note. If you want the iPhone, you're going to get the 10. Yeah. See, it, people don't buy these phones on specs most of the time these days. A lot of people did buy Galaxies on specs when their their social media, yeah, that that's what phones are. They're glorified social media machines these days. They're barely even phones. They need a new name because nobody calls on them. Um, a lot of people did used to buy Samsungs on specs because they had the screens that were in 2K and 4K, and I totally get that at a. At one point, they had so much more <laughs> smart media. There we go. You like all my smart medias? These are these are my smart medias. If you if you stack them all together, you can you can media five at once. This is my Twitter smart media. This is my Facebook smart media. This is my MySpace smart media. It was only fifty bucks, so I I use a dead phone on a dead social media site this is my pinterest smart media uh, this is my youtube's smart media <laughs> um so but yeah if you wanted the upgraded ram or you wanted the better screen you would go to samsung in the past but today if you're comparing these phones they're so similar it's about whether you like Android or Apple or whether you've had Android or Apple for a while because everything carries over pretty well from all your previous phones and the specs are getting really close. It's getting tough to say that one phone's way better than the other and nobody's going from a phone that's three gigabytes to a phone that's four gigabytes because we don't really necessarily need that one extra gigabyte at the point where we've already got three gigabytes of RAM. Um, yeah, I mean, it sucks that Samsung doesn't have any stores, but I don't know if that makes them irrelevant. I think that more stores should probably take up the mantle like Apple does with having physical stores, but <laughs> I don't want other stores to like ruin that experience. And I don't think enough people would come and just play with Samsung phones for that necessarily to be worth it. Some people would, but Apple's got the customer service and they've got uh, like the money, I guess, to where they can just have this big store that's really expensive to make. I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I've done some research into how much it costs to build one Apple store and it's astronomical. And then they fill it with five thousand dollar computers ten thousand dollar computers yeah apple stores are way better but apple allows people to come in and play on a ten thousand dollar computer just play on it they don't say are you here to buy something or are you just loitering other stores do that and they don't want people to come in and just play around on this expensive hardware. And that's the real problem. Apple has very friendly people who are very knowledgeable and it's somewhat difficult to get hired in an Apple store. Whereas Samsung, um, it's probably not much easier to get into the store, but they're... I don't want to say they're less friendly, but they're less inclined to have a bunch of people in the store not actually wanting to buy anything. And they don't have as good of a system to where... 
<laughs> I would love to work for Apple too. Um, yeah, I, I do know it's very hard to get in. They're a bit prestigious. Um, yeah, you, you can go anywhere with an iPhone to get it fixed. Um, it does void your warranty. I think it actually does void your warranty on Samsung phones too, though. So be careful there. Um, but at the point where your phone's fixed, a lot of people don't necessarily care about the warranty. If you have a warranty, then you're going to use that most of the time. I'm not a fan of Apple Care because it costs money so um well look what did i miss something <laughs> um yeah i i think that apple care is a little weird because you spend money and then you have to spend more money to get your phone fixed and typically for me it's come out to be about the same amount of money to have apple care and not having Apple Care, um, I definitely like playing devil's advocate too. That's that's why I did the initial video about Apple sucking, because I don't necessarily think that. And there is some things Apple does bad, but there's a ton of things Apple does better than Samsung and Google and HTC and Razer and everything else. Right. If you get it fixed, good you're going to get it fixed good again. You're not sitting there going to pay more so that you don't void your warranty. And if you have a warranty that you can get something fixed for free, you're going to use that. If you have um, Apple Care, you're going to have to pay to get it fixed anyway. And then you have to decide, is it better to get it fixed through Apple, which, you know, at least you know they're going to do it right. Or if they don't, they'll just give you a new phone. Um, but a lot of times they are much more expensive than going somewhere else. And when you're dealing with phones that are so expensive and most people who have iPhones want to buy other Apple products, it goes so well with an Apple Watch. It goes so well with ear pods. You're going to want to buy that. So if you can save 99 bucks doing a screen repair or something, why wouldn't you? You know, you can put that towards something else in the Apple ecosystem. Exactly, Rozzy. I'm glad you understand. Um, <laughs> this has been a lot more discussion than ranting about why Apple is so much better than Samsung. But I got to say, it has been fun. We are getting close to when I'll have to go. Um, it is fun. Yeah, I definitely like it. I plan on making an actual video um, about why Apple is better than Samsung, and that should um, be up in about two weeks. Um, so sorry for the wait, uh, but thank you for your patience. I do have some great content already lined up until then. Um, but yeah, in that video, uh, I'm just going to go straight ham on... <laughs> I'll see if I can expedite a little bit. I'll see what I can do. Um, if it is not, let's see, it would probably be on the 12th, February 12th, if it is not sooner than that. Um, I would like to think that's the latest I would post it. So, um, yeah, that one is just going to be going straight ham on Apple phones and Samsung phones saying why Samsung sucks compared to Apple. <laughs> Dude, I wish my Apple store, or I wish my mall had an Apple store. The nearest Apple store to me is about three hours away, and that sucks. Uh, thanks. Thanks for being in the notification squad. Hopefully you like my content. I know sometimes it's hard to know exactly what to expect, but I know you're saying that you kind of like that sometimes. So hopefully you appreciate what I'm trying to do here. Um, and if not, you can always tell me how to improve. Um, I am currently trying to figure out a brand new intro and a brand new outro for my videos. So as soon as I get that done, Rozzy, you will be featured in my ending. 
um, imp impressed with my channel, because if that's the case, then thank you. <laughs> or impressed that I've been uploading Monday through Friday for a while now, because I'm I'm impressed with myself for that. I'm I'm not always the most organized person, and being able to do that regularly is pretty cool. Um, everything on it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm still pretty new, but. Um, I'm glad you're liking it. Um, I like your channel. I'm subscribed to you as well, Rozzy. Um, and yeah, like I said, as soon as I get this new intro and outro figured out, I will start putting that on basically every single video I do, and that will feature your name in the end card since you um, are my Patreon. So thank you for that as well. I need some uh, supporters to really make this happen, make it bigger and better, and once again, get a new microphone, a new camera, and be able to do bigger, better content, um, which I've got a lot in store once I can get some better equipment. Uh, but I'm, I'm in no rush. This is working for now. And, you know, YouTube and iPhone is making it easier to run a YouTube channel with my computer and my iPhone. And so... I'm not upset, um, but yeah, I don't have much else to say. Let's reach that goal, honestly. You should make more Patreon perks. Yeah, I do need to work on my Patreon page. That's another thing. Um, I will probably finish this intro and outro because I really want to get you featured in my videos, get you some new subscribers, and just thank you all in all for being a part of my Patreon. And then go from there. My Patreon, I created early on when I created my channel and never um, really pimped out my Patreon, if you will. I didn't try and get people to support me on Patreon because I didn't think people would or didn't think it was worth it yet at that point. So now that I'm getting closer to where I think people would want to be Patreons, I can get some more tiers going. Um, for me, it was more about starting out at a dollar just so that I can get some people in there. And, you know, $5 a month um, isn't much. <laughs> um, there, There's Patreon perks, though, Eric. Um, I mean, I'll take cash. I'll take all the cash you want to give me. But if you um, uh, subscribe on Patreon, you can get exclusive content there'll be polls and i plan on really using that um social media if you will this is my patreon phone and using that to do a lot of cool things including early videos letting you guys vote on which video you want to see like if that was all set up i would post a poll right now <laughs> We'll see, Eric. We'll see. Maybe I can uh, show you my Patreon for free. Um, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, shoot. I don't even know what I was saying. Uh, oh, yeah. If if my Patreon was all set up... Sorry, I'm so off topic. Um, I would create a poll basically saying, do you want this iPhone is better than Android video tomorrow or do you want this? <laughs> Hand him $100 cash and you'll be good enough. Thank you, Rozzy. I love the way you think. I need to hire you, get you on board with this channel because that is some great management talking right there. You you have potential, man. I, I need people like you around helping. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I will take $100 cold hard cash, get you all the Patreon perks. Um, I'll hook you up for $100 cash. <laughs> um... But yeah, that's about all I've got. So unless you guys have any more questions or anything, um, I'm going to go and I will keep working on that um, end screen and intro. $100 dollar dollar make you holla louder. <laughs> oh, that's too funny, Rozzy. You're killing me, man. Um, so yeah, I will... Get back on that and hopefully my videos keep improving you get that end screen and that intro very soon here and you like what you see um and then pretty soon here we'll be doing the best of my 
200 videos. Um, my second 100, I did a three-part best of my first 100 videos. And I don't think this one's going to be three parts, but um, probably just one part. And then a joke super cut of my second 100 videos. Um, so yeah, hopefully that goes well. We'll see what's what's good in there and what's uh, not so good in there. I know that there's they're not all my best video, but there's some of my videos are some of my favorites. Um, and I think that my video that's going up next Friday, Rozzy's going to really, really like. I know Eric and myself really, really like it, really liked making it, and I think it's really funny. So I think that'll be one of my best ones. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys stay tuned for that and like everything you see in the process. So in the meantime, guys, I'm Zach. Don't you do crack, and I'll catch you in the future. Thanks for watching today.